So it's now time to override the save method. We understand how it works. Let's actually take a look at what's going on with it. So the save method is built into the model class as we've said in the last one. So if I come in here and define save and just do self args, keyword args, I'll explain those in a second, and then just do super cur URL self dot save and then args and keyword args. That is the save method. This is where we can override it. We can actually do something here, print something. So the save method is di directly correlated to everything that's going on in the models when we do the save. And the way we connect it, first of all, we override it with this line right here, just writing out the save method. We are already overriding the default method. And we call the default method by doing this super call. So this is getting the super class of this particular class. That is the class that it's inheriting from. We're calling that save method there. If it existed, it would call it there. And in this case, it does call it there. So this is a way to actually do that. Now think about something too, is you can say my save and you could do something like this and just do self and call still call that super save. You definitely could still do something like this, but that's not the default action. We are overriding the save method here. Here we are adding our own custom method that still is calling save. In fact, you wouldn't have to do it that way. You would just do self.save, right? That is actually how you would run the save method somewhere else. In our case, we wanna make sure that we're running the save method with any given arguments or keyword arguments that we just don't know about. Now, of course, arguments and keyword arguments are things like if I said ABC and something equals to AB uh, none, right? So this is a standard argument and this is a keyword argument. That's some Python basics if you didn't already know that, but using the star and then the star star basically takes place for those things. That means all other arguments other than the instance itself all other arguments go through that actual like argument placeholder. And then this one is for all the keyword arguments. So any other keyword arguments go inside of that. This is really nice because we don't have to know what's being passed then. That's the main thing here. We don't know if there are arguments or keyword arguments. These are really nice placeholders for that. And these can be added to any function, any method, any function. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and comment out my save. I don't need that. So let's print something. This is where I can actually change things about anything for that matter, right? So in here, I can just go ahead and save something here, but I'm gonna make a generator for a short code. And I'm just gonna say define, and this is gonna be called code generator. And we're gonna give it a size. And in my case, I said the max length is gonna be 15 but I only want a size of six. I don't really need that many codes in here. And then I'll set characters. Well, I wanna have certain characters in here. So I'll just say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, Y, X, you know, Z, whatever. Um, not exactly the greatest alphabet, but I have my characters in here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna import random or random as in random the python random so it's not exactly random but it's close to it and i'm going to return the string called join and i'll say random dot choice of chars or the keyword argument of characters and i'll just say four underscore in range of size okay so this is going to give us back a random string now, if you wanna know what this is doing, if you're not that familiar with Python, basically what it's saying here is we're doing a for loop, so for underscore in range size, and this underscore is just kind of a placeholder. We're not really using it, like we're not using that variable. We don't care about the size. So I could say int uh, i for like the integer if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave it as underscore. That's kind of a shorthand method that a lot of developers use when this variable is not actually being used, but we want to run an iteration. And then I could just say string or new code equals to an empty string. And then I could just say down here, 
new code plus equals to random choice of characters, right? So these three lines is virtually the same as this one line, but after that for loop, we would want return new code. So actually these four lines is the same as this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the four lines. I'll just comment those out just for your own reference later. I will delete them eventually. Um, but now that we've got this code generator here, I'm just gonna say short code equals to code generator parentheses. Well, more specifically, I wanna say self.shortcode, not just short code, but self.shortcode equals to code generator. So we'll save this and the save method should absolutely work. So if we look in our, our actual uh, terminal for where the server is being ran and we go back into Chrome, click on CFE blog, this shortcode should, should change. If I hit save and continue, it changed. And also inside of the terminal, it actually printed out something. If I hit save and continue, it's gonna change every single time. Really, really cool. Um, but this code generator is actually not that great. It's only using characters, it's not using numbers. So we can also write out a bunch of numbers here. So we can write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. I could do it this way, but this is not how I want to run programming, right? This is just a lot of writing and there's actually a way to be a little bit faster about it by importing string. And now what we could do is import our characters. We can do st string.ascii lowercase. So that's ASCII characters and all of them being lowercase. Yes, you could do uppercase if you wanted, but we want lowercase. And I'll do just plus string.digits. So that kind of handles the characters a little bit better for us. So if we save that, now we'll have digits and um, characters. We'll just hit save and continue. Notice that it is giving us these random short codes. Really, really cool, very useful uh, function for us. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it here. We're gonna pick up in the next one to make this just better. It's not very good right now. And also we don't wanna have code like this inside of our models. We want it somewhere else. So in the next one, we'll pick up right where we left off here and talk about this some more. If you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.